Hi, this is John Hampton, and uh, was unable to get into the uh, studio to record on Sunday uh, for this week's Bible study, so we're doing it on Monday. I uh, want we'll to thank all our viewers out there on uh, YouTube for Rollin Television, and today we're studying the fifth trumpet judgment, which if you want to follow along with us, uh, you should be able to find it in Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 through 12. And before we do that, I'm going to jump up just to the tail end of chapter 8 here, verse 13. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of the heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet, of the three angels, which are yet to sound. So they're saying that the next three angels that sound their trumpets are going to be the three woes. Um, and you'll see why when we get into discussing what happens in these judgments. So, here we go. Chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as of the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts unto the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was the torment of the scorpion when he strike of a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had hair as, a as they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were of the teeth of lions, and they had breastplates as if it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle, and they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their powers to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. His name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue half his name Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. So, let's start back here in verse 1. So the fifth angel sounds, they see a star fall from heaven down to the earth. Most likely the meteorite. That's what usually happens. You know, like, uh, back in those days, scientists did not really know meteorites like they do now. And so, most likely a meteorite falls uh, that is sent from God. And the angel behind that star is given the key to the bottom of his pit. So, they open that pit, and smoke came out of the pit like a great furnace. And it even was so smoky that it darkened the sun and the air. Um, but you know, we just went through that where we had the third part of the day darkened and everything like that and the fourth judgment, fourth trumpet judgment. So, uh, here we are, the sun getting dark again. By this point, people are going to be, uh, there is a day and the night, if you know what I mean. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon earth and the was getting power to power scorpions. So basically, these locusts are going to be, uh, a combination that might look like a locust or feel like a locust, but they're going to be like a scorpion because they're going to have a sting in their tail. And it's going to, they're, they're going to have a commandment from the Lord not to hurt the grass or the trees. So, which is good because, don't forget, we just had that judgment where uh, all the trees and where all the grass and a third of the trees are scorched. So, even though grass may have started growing again by this time, uh, as is indicated here, this, these locusts slash scorpions are not uh, there to hurt the trees and the grass, thank goodness. 
Now it says they're after these men that have not the seal of God in their forts. So during the tribulation, there's going to be two seals. One is the seal of the Antichrist, is number 666, which you definitely don't want because except that, that means you die apart from God forever. There's no going back after taking that. But the other seal is also irrevocable. If you say you're one of God's own and have his seal in your forehead, you don't have to worry about it uh, and inadvertently or accidentally getting the Antichrist's mark or the mark of the beast as it's coming called. Uh, because Jesus, when Jesus seals you, he's got you for eternity and the devil can't touch you. So only those that are not touched by God or have the seal of God are the ones that's going to be attacked by these locusts. And it's not going to kill them. So it's not going to hurt them. But they will be tormented five months. And the torment is a scorpion when it starts. So you know how painful it is when you get stung by a scorpion. Scorpion is venomous. And thankfully here in Alabama at this point in time, we don't have them here in Alabama. But I know people out west that are in the deserts of Arizona and Texas that have described the sting of a scorpion to me. And it, it, it's very painful. Very painful. So think about that kind of pain for five months. Solid. Now they're going to, it says a lot of them are going to try to die. They're going to try to commit suicide. They're going to try to jump in front of trains. They're going to try to jump off cliffs. They're going to try to run their car into a house or a wall or something just to get try to kill themselves. But it says here, they're not going to be able to die. Death is not going to find them. In other words, no matter how hard they try to take their lives, they're going to have to live right on through this. So... It describes a, the locusts look like horses that are ready for battle. You know, we don't send horses into battle these days. But if you think back to movies of the Civil War or movies of King Arthur or maybe the uh, Crusades of the Holy Roman Empire trying to take the Holy Land back, you've seen how those horses were adorned for battle. So we're, these, these locusts are going to have that same type of adornment. So the heads of the locusts, and it, you know, in the indication here is it could even take the shape of a horse, possibly, except they're small. Obviously, that would be small to sting a person. So uh, that's debatable, but uh, you know, at least they're going to have the dormant like horses when they go into battle. On their heads are crowns of gold. So little tiny crowns of gold are going to be on their head. Meaning they come to conquer. A face of man. We're already talking about one weird creature. And we're not even after describing this thing yet. So it's got a battle armament like a horse. But it's really shaped like a horse. It's a locust. Has a tail that stings like a scorpion. Has a crown of gold on its head. And its face is shaped like a man. Wow. This thing is going to be ugly. To say a word. So the hair was like a hair of a woman. Usually, what they're meaning there, you know, in biblical days, women's hair was very long. Men were supposed to shave it, but women had their hair very, very long. So it's saying that the hair is going to be long and flowing on these things. And the teeth, like a teeth of a lion. Now, little tiny thing like this, you can just imagine having the teeth. I, I have cats, and I know what a canine's teeth looks like. And uh, trust me, a cat can bite you. And the bigger the cat, the bigger the bite. And so a lion, you know what damage a lion does when it bites you. So these things don't have the teeth like a lion, even though they're a little tiny. I don't even want to call them insect because they're really demons out of hell. that have been uh, saved for just a set, this purpose all throughout time. But yeah, it's these things ain't going to be nice. Breastplates of iron. Once again, back to the horses that are going for battle. The breastplates of iron. And the wings are going to sound like chariots, chariots running to battle. Um, once again, I think back to the Ten Commandments and the scene with all the chariots as Egyptians. Uh, they're making all that racket as it wheels are click, 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 going to try to chase the Israelites, you know. That sound, multiply that times thousands and thousands and thousands of these insects slash demons. 
Wow. You're going to hear these things coming before you see them. And probably when you see them, they're probably going to make you sick just looking at them before they even sting you. So that tail's like scorpions, like we mentioned earlier. And their power to sting you is in the tail. That's like a scorpion. And the power was to hurt men five months. So, two schools of thought. Five, that when they sting you, it's five months for it to heal. We know that much. There's also a school of thought among a lot of the people that teach prophecy that these uh, these creatures, if you will, are going to have five months to sting. In other words, they're going to be released on Earth for five months and then they're going to disappear. Um, not sure if I am reading that into this at this point. I mean, it, you know, the five months are mentioned twice. Now, if it's five months to sting, five months to heal, uh, we're talking a total of 10 months solid that they would be on Earth instead of just five months. But uh, in any event, they're going to be there. And if you're not got the seal of God in your forehead, if you're not sealed as one of God's own, if you're not accepted uh, Jesus as your Savior during the tribulation, then they're after you. And so they're king, which is the angel over the bottomless pit. Is got two names in Hebrew is Abaddon, A B A D D O N. Uh, in Greek, it's Polion, Apollyon, A P O L L Y O N. So we got two different names for this leader for this bunch of uh, demon insects, if you will. So this is the end of the first one. Now, next week, we're going to be talking about. The second woe, and oh boy, let's put it this way. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm just going to put this as my little tease for next week's video, if you will. Uh, if you've ever heard the song Ghost Riders in the Sky, this is going to be like the tribulation uh, coming after God's enemies version of ghost riders in the sky okay you'll see what i mean next week when we study if you want to go ahead and read ahead of time um to see what's going to happen in that sixth trumpet judgment it's revelation chapter 9 verse 13 through Twenty-one. Now, once once we get past the sixth flow, we do actually have a break before the seventh flow, and we'll be studying some uh, things that's going on in heaven and on earth in the meantime. So now, uh, that is our journey for this week through Revelation. Good news is, those of us who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ now, before the rapture takes place, are not going to have to go through all these judgments. If uh, uh, we believe in Jesus before the rapture takes place, we'll be going up in the rapture. Now, that being said, uh, are you you know are you sure that you are part of God's elect? Are you sure you accept that Jesus is your Savior? If you have not, I have just tell Jesus you're sorry for your sin. And you reject the devil and you want Jesus to live in your heart. Once you do that, drop us a note on this video as a comment and let us know that you did accept Jesus as your Savior. We'll rejoice with you. Be sure to find your good Bible believing church. Be sure to pick up a copy of the Bible. Uh, I'm reading from King James here, but uh, you know, if King James is a little bit hard for you to understand, there are other versions out there that um, are still very meaty in the word, but still easier to understand. So the NIV comes to mind. The Revised Standard Version comes to mind. The Living Bible comes to mind. Um, 
the Homeland Study Bible, H-O-L-M-A-N Study Bible comes to mind. Uh, any of those would be a great uh, version for you as well. Um, if for some reason or you can't, I really understand the uh, language of King James. I, I, it was written in 1611. I mean, we're, we're what, 2022 now? So, uh, yes. Yeah. But hey, uh, if you're a scholar and you love the flow of the English language as Shakespeare wrote it, that, that you know, that's the type of English is in King James. But uh, just the point is, just get your Bible that you can read and understand and read every day, pray every day. And uh, like I said, find your good Bible, believe in church, get plugged in. So until next time, this is John Hampton. God bless. Have a great day.